Yeah, my name is Douglas Smith. I'm a historian of Russia based in Seattle in the United States and I've been working on Russia and Russian history for, for decades now and I've written five books and uh, it's one of the things I just love to do is focusing on Russia. Rasputin, it's, it's hard to know where to start and it's hard to know where to stop, but he's just one of these figures that's so legendary, um, truly one of the great figures of the 20th century that I think everybody is excited about. You know, I never, I never thought I would end up doing Rasputin, but it was my previous book, Former People, where I had to read a lot about that period and everywhere I looked was Rasputin and it sort of got my mind twirling and I see, sort of crawled inside my head after that and I couldn't let go. Well, this is, I think, a great time to, to take a long look at Rasputin. December 2016 is the centenary of his spectacular, gruesome murder. And I think, I think it's nice to sort of come back to these big dates and look at what we know and, and what have we sort of misunderstood and to try to set the record straight. I think the book does say a lot of new things. I think, you know, what we have thought we've known about Rasputin was often a caricature and, you know, sort of myth piled on legend and rumor and gossip. So I've really tried to strip away, go back to the original sources, that, that sources that no one has really even seen before, and reveal a more complex, a more human character, um, not the, the sort of antichrist, you know, figure that we've been led to believe, but a, a someone with a, you know, a much more complex nature to him that is, in fact, in that way, much more fascinating. One of the things that was a real challenge for me in writing about this book was trying to figure out who the young Rasputin was because the first 30 years or so of his life are sort of a black hole. There's very little information. Um, and I found that very challenging, but by going to archives in Siberia, I was able to actually uncover some things we never really knew about the young Rasputin. Writing about the murder was fascinating, and so much of it, I think, was that, you know, it's one of those stories that we all know and, and think we know well. Um, but as I dug into the sources, I realized that everything we thought we knew was, was completely wrong and, and made up. And so to sort of get at the truth of that moment was fascinating. Typically, in the past, when people have written about Rasputin, they've sort of just based themselves on the published sources and other biographies. And I knew from the beginning that if I was going to do this book and to do it well, I had to go back to the archives. Um, and I had no idea just how incredibly difficult this was going to be. I ended up getting material from seven different countries. Um, my office is full of boxes. <laughs> I would like the reader to come away with a much more complex, rounded, um, deeper understanding of this, of this incredible figure and to realize that he was not this monster, that there was a lot of good in him as well as bad, and that he reflects in a way the complexities of the time in which he lived, that this was a man who was very much uh, a part of sort of fin de siècle Russia in those final years of the Romanov dynasty. The book will be published uh, in early November, both in the United States and in the UK. Um, and if anything, I would have to say it'd make a great Christmas present.